I'm here with Michael Domingue, who is chopping the heads off of things. But really, Michael, it's to make these really wonderful creations. Yep. Um, what I like to do is I like to use wedding toppers, or actually any sort of figurine, and mix them up a little bit. Sometimes they're with, with skeletal things, sometimes they're with little animal toys, but you know, make them so they're not so typical. That's cool. So, uh, so how do we start this project? Well, the first part of it is actually the funnest part of it, because we get to play, do a little Marie Antoinette action with these, because okay. we basically put these little guys, we've got a couple little figurines here, like, oh, here's a nice, oh, I've graduated from, I've graduated from high school. Okay, well, not anymore, but he, <laughs> he goes, you're going to the guillotine. So, so for that. So is this just as a clamp? Or something. Yeah, I just have a clamp. You know, if you have a vice, that's mm -hmm. great. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in a clamp, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get a rotary tool. And uh, anytime you use a rotary tool, eyewear, we don't want sticky things in your eyes. So we are going to take, move this out of the way. These are, of course, the leftover heads from the time before. Now, this is just a plastic figurine. I assume wedding toppers come in plastic and other materials. They do. So ideally, what you want is plastic. There are cutoff wheels for things like ceramic, but it's mm -hmm. a whole lot harder. So okay. ideally, if you can track down plastic. a resin or a plastic one, perfect. All right, so, and off with his head. So is that head going to go flying, or is it pretty a uh, pretty controlled process? Well, I would hope it's controlled, but it's uh, you never know. I do noticed you? that you're actually rotating it instead of just coming straight through in one direction. Well, that's mostly to make it even, and so that's ideally going to make it a little less likely to come flying. And it actually off. smells a little bit like the plastic is melting. Well, that's because it is. What you get with plastic is you get what's called molten goobers. So, <laughs> is, so that a, is that a technical that's a term? Technical, molten goobers, and so that's what these little things are, molten goobers, because the plastic does actually okay. melt. So he is now ready for action. Now, of course, I would do the same thing with our little scullies, too, because in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a graduate of, maybe a graduate of life. I was going to say. I would say. So we'll do the same thing. Oop, I'll get that for you. Thanks. So I'm going to put him in the clamp. Now, with guillotine. something like the skeleton, I notice you have to put it at a, a bit of an angle, and it doesn't matter. No, however, however sort of fits is going to be the best. So, and this one will be a really easy, I could practically get rid of this with, you know, I was with scissors. I going to say even scissors or something like that, because it's it a off. really thin neck, but, but you don't really want to ruin your scissors. Well, that's Better to use a tool. Too. So, we're going to just do off with his head. This will be an easy one. Boom. Boom. Like so. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to make this go on to here, right? So right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rotary tool. I'm going to put in a little drill bit. Oh, that's cool. Yes, it is. And then I'm going to... So if you're drilling plastic, are you using the same kind of bit that you would use to drill wood or anything else? Um, you know, mostly yes. I would say most of the time that's true. So this is interesting also, the way that you use the uh, drill parallel or to the table instead of, I think of always a drill as coming down. Well, part of that is safety, because if I have my hand here and right. my hand here, I have a little more control. Like my hand is like right. not going to Right, and this come. is really wobbly, I would assume, so coming from the top a little bit more correct. difficult. Correct, correct. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. I need to put a little hole in the base of his skull. So I'm just going to kind of... Oh, that's such a small piece, it's scary, but I see that your fingers are completely yeah. out of the see, way. Right? You've and wedged just... yourself on the table, you're completely in control. And obviously, you know, if, if you're really nervous, you know, a, a, a vice of some kind is always right. going to be the best thing to do. So now... Good advice. Good. <laughs> oh, you a witty one. <laughs> All right, so get rid of that. We don't okay. need that thing anymore. All we need are these things. Now, what we need? Wire. Ah. You ready for trickiness? I'm ready for some devious action. Okay, so I'm gonna run the wire in there, and since this is hollow, I'm gonna make a stopper. Ah. And that can't go anywhere. So then it keeps it from pulling out, I yep. say. And we'll snip that. Stand back. Woo. Safety glasses on. Yeah, now they're coming off, but we're okay. Now I have one that I pre-drilled too, so okay. and I have some little little wire here. So if it wasn't hollow, you wouldn't need to go to that hole up. Uh, that whole process we just did, you'd be able to simply stick it in like you just did there. Exactly. So like this one, mm -hmm. like that, right? And boom, you have your figurine. And if I just hold this up for a second, you can see here I have my little skeleton. And he's just reading his book left and right, left and right, left Absolutely. and right. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, if you can manage to have him do that, <laughs> you really, you'll really be jamming. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a two-part epoxy. 
epoxy clay and we're gonna mush it together and then we're gonna use it as an adhesive. Cool. All right, and we happen to have some there right here. And so we're gonna get equal parts. And we don't need a lot of it, but I'm just gonna quickly mix this. Now, one thing that I need to do when I'm mixing this stuff is I really need to put gloves on. And, and of course, you can follow all of the manufacturer safety instructions that are on your. They're two listed on there. Yeah, play, they're listed. You know what to each, do. Each each product's going to have a slightly different thing. So just read them, see what they see what they say, and then. I always think the thing that's so interesting to me is I, I say since I've become an artist, I've become a chemist because I'm fascinated by what makes things work and knowing all that information. And people, I think, don't think about reading labels, but it really makes a difference when I'm going through like the craft store, looking at stuff. I like to know what's in it so I can kind of figure out what it is that it's going to do. Predict well, things a little better. It's, there's a couple of reasons to actually read the label. First off, it's for safety, you know, knowing what it's gonna potentially do to you and all that other stuff. But the other reason is because if you don't read the label, often you're not using it right. So if you actually read the label, it might actually do things that it's supposed to do. So, That's a great yeah. point because sometimes you know it for one use, but actually a product has multiple uses. Right, absolutely. So this is a clay and I assume we're going to be molding. We're going to be molding and what I'm going to actually, we're going to use it more as an adhesive. Okay. And so now this is mixed, so this should be okay to handle. So now it's one color, it was two colors. Correct. And so now this is, should, you know, this will take about two and a half hours to cure. So I have that much time to work with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it here, and then I'm going to plunk, whoops, my drilled guy's head onto here. So like you have so. all that excess clay. Do you leave it there as you a can, collar? You can, or you, you could. You could decorate it. You could press things into it. Um, you could also grind it down and carve it. So if you have a rotary mm. tool, you can carve it down. And then we'll do the same thing with this guy. Now, there's another really cool thing that we can do with this. So after you get this on here, Let's just plunk that. So it's going to take two and a half hours for this to set up, and then that, those two parts will be glued together permanently. Yeah, and the more you can get them attached, the better it's going to stay. So in other words, okay. the more I can bring the clay around it, okay. the better that will be. So another thing to do is a project or a process called a Schlerber Gerbering. I'm sorry. <laughs> Schlerber Gerbering. Gerbering. That's just That's fun to say. Yes, it is fun to say. So Schlerber Gerbering is something I, I invented the name, not okay. the process. So okay. Schlerber Gerbering, what I can do is I can take this and I can water it down and use it as sort of a primer on this. So with this, huh. I just get it a little bit wet. Yes. And it creates this nice milkiness. You see all that milkiness? Yeah. Yes. Wait, milk. I've done some traditional clay work. It wasn't epoxy clay, but it was just traditional clay. And I know that this is kind of like a slurry technique Correct. where you get things to bond. Correct. And so we are I had Schlerber no idea. And slurry. Well, sorry, we're we're sh Schlerber Gerbering. Exactly. So you see, you get all that milky stuff on there. Yeah. And then when that cures, that will be so very, you're very painful. So you're not even putting the clay on there. You're putting like the residue, the Schlerber Gerbering of the clay. That's such a cool idea. And it'll be a great right. service for painting plastic, Absolutely. which is one of those tough things to paint. Really hard to paint. Really hard to paint. But Schlerber Gerbering. Schlerber Gerbering makes it possible. Absolutely. I love so, that. Yep. So we've Schlerber Gerbered, and this guy will get Schlerber Gerbered. And then, once they're Schlerber Gerbered, then we can, of course, paint them, or we can mount them on a little thingy, we can say, oh, he's gonna go on here and I can build a little platform for him to stand so out of the clay. So you're actually gonna use that as adhesive and building a platform, and if we look at this wonderful uh, sort of Franken cat here, cat man. That's right. I can see that right here, right, it almost looks like a piece of wood, but I assume it's made out of clay. It's made out of clay, and I've pressed little design patterns in there, so like you can see, you can take almost anything, even a rib cage, and to it make the a clay. And a texture tool. Correct. I love this, you're so creative, Michael, thank My you. Thank you.